Emily, the last time we spoke, the mood in Israel was one of abject terror, uh, misery, upset and fear. Uh, how are things tonight? Well, I wouldn't say the mood has changed that much. Looking at the recent events as the numbers have been counted for casualties, for injuries, it does seem to be more grim, even if more secure than what we initially feared. Uh, there are over just over 1,400 that have been confirmed dead, over 3,200 injured. We haven't had any word on the hostages. And I think yesterday was probably one of the most difficult days for Israelis as we started to hear the absolute absolute horror stories of what happened on Saturday from firsthand accounts. There were children who were tortured, who were tied together and burned alive. Uh, there were babies that were executed. The IDF reported that they found approximately 40 babies who had been killed, some of them burned alive, some of them even decapitated, as well as other casualties which were decapitated. Uh, we have continued to see rocket fire very heavily throughout the south. And in addition to that, we have seen several times coming from the north, including today, which we saw Gaza fire rockets that actually reached the north. So it does seem that things are escalating. However, at the same time, uh, we do see that the IDF is taking a significant action against Hamas terror groups. We saw today that the IDF dropped leaflets to warn almost one million Gazans to leave northern Gaza and enter southern Gaza. Now, Israel's goal with this is in order to protect as many civilian lives as possible. Of course, this is incredibly difficult when you're dealing with a terrorist organization, of course, with the backing of the Islamic Republic of Iran, that continues to target civilians themselves, including, by the way, their own civilians. Hamas is known for using human shields throughout Gaza. They often plant their military sites, weapons caches, infrastructure, other activities they will conduct in the middle of civilian populations. I'm talking about residential neighborhoods, mosques, schools. In fact, multiple times in 2014, we saw that uh, Hamas had stored rockets inside UNRWA schools, children's schools, three times in one operation. So we know how they work. Uh, they're committing war crimes left, right, and sideways, and that makes it incredibly difficult for Israel to take action. At the same time, we can't apologize for taking action. In fact, the opposite. Israel has to take out Hamas. We have to. This has gone on long enough. It's only getting worse from here. And when it gets worse for us, it's also getting worse for Palestinians. Don't forget that. And do the Israeli people have confidence in the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? I mean, I think that there is serious doubt right now. The country is not nearly as politically divided as it was even prior to this operation in which you saw a stark divide between being supportive of this government or opposing it. That is not the conversation happening right now, nor should it be. Uh, it's not the time to discuss whether the prime minister is fit or unfit. That being said, initial polling did indicate that the vast majority of the public does feel that the prime minister after this should step down, remain to be seen how Israelis will feel at the end of this uh, operation. Uh, well, what about the potential humanitarian impact of an Israeli retaliation? I mean, it's my personal view that, that uh, Israel has a right to defend itself, and that is the position of the UK government. But uh, is it weighing on people's minds in Tel Aviv, the impact this will have in Gaza? Oh, absolutely. I mean, for me personally, I think it's absolutely heartbreaking to see some of the scenes from Gaza. And what's even more frustrating is that it doesn't have to be that way. It is that way because we're dealing with a terrorist organization that is determined to kill as many civilians as possible. And by the way, that goes for Palestinians, too. They're not interested in protecting Palestinian lives. And the reason that Israel dropped those leaflets today is precisely to protect and to minimize civilian casualties. And we've seen that same behavior from the IDF in every single operation that they conduct in Gaza. Israel does everything that they can in order to preserve civilian lives and not to have more 
uh, casualties than absolutely necessary. At the same time, we have seen a push from civil society yesterday and today, as well as some calls from the IDF on this issue, urging the UN to take action. But we have seen public pressure to encourage Egypt and the Arab League, as well as the Arab world in general, to take action for the Palestinians, to help provide them support or safe passage through the Rafah crossing through Egypt. Uh, however, Egypt has rejected those calls thus far, and Hamas has in fact tried to block Palestinians from leaving the northern Gaza Strip, including by, according to reports from Gaza, by blocking some of the roads. Uh, India, uh, finally coming back to you, your husband uh, Hanyana has just been called up to the Israeli military forces, if anyone's just joining us. Um, are you hoping to be in touch with him? Do you have a way of communicating with him? Well, thank God I get the occasional text to calm my nerves. I mean, I think anyone who has a deployed spouse right now is just waiting for that next text just to yeah. confirm that we can go to bed knowing that they're okay.